Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to create a scatter plot. The table below shows the number of weekly TV ads run and the number of cars sold for an eight week period. Um, what we're going to do is create a scatter plot for the data and then we're going to interpret the trend of the data in the scatter plot. All right, so the first thing that you want to do when you're creating a scatter plot is to create a scale that fits your data set. So if you notice in here, our data set is all positive values. And so since I'm dealing with all positive values, I only have quadrant one drawn out here. So that's all you're going to need in order to um, create the scatter plot as quadrant one. And so basically what we want to do is we want to look at each of our variables and try to decide which one should be our X variable. X is always going to be our explanatory and Y is always going to be our response. So the response is kind of the one that depends on the other one. So in algebra, we call it the independent variable and the dependent variable. So if you look at this, our ads run versus cars sold, it makes more sense to say that X is our independent variable where the number of ads would influence how many cars are sold versus saying that the number of cars sold influences the number of ads that are run. Okay, so we're gonna set up our ads run as our X and our cars sold as our Y. So then once you've decided which one is your explanatory and which one is your response, you're going to look for your minimum and your maximum in each. So my minimum in this one is zero. My max is 28. Okay, and for this one, our minimum is 10. And our max is 40. So that means that when I'm creating a scale for X and Y, I want to make sure that for my X that it can go from zero to 28. So I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to count by fives. Okay, and I didn't have to go all the way up to 40. I could fit it in there. I really just needed to stop at the 30 because the 28 is below that. Okay, and then if I'm going this way, Again, since I'm going from 10 to 40, I'm gonna count by fives this way too. So this one happened to be where I counted by fives. Sometimes you're not gonna count by the same thing on both of your scales. So sometimes your data sets will look different and you will um, have to use a different scale. So this is known as our scale. Okay, and it's also important to label your axes. So this one would be our number of ads run. Okay, and over here we would say that this is our cars sold. Okay, and then it's a matter of just going through and plotting your pair of points. So I would go to 6, 15, 6 would be slightly past the 5, and then I would go up to the 15 and I would put a dot. Okay, for my next one, it would be at 20, and I would go to 31 and put a dot. Zero, I would be at 10. 14, I'm going to be at 16. 25, I'm going to be at 28. 16, I would be at 20. 28, I am up all the way at 40. And then our last one is 18 and 25. So at 18, I would be at 25. And you do want to make sure that you have all of your points. All right, so if you notice, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. So we do have all of our data there. You want to make sure that you don't miss anything. And so that's how you create the scatter plot. So once you've created the scatter plot, you kind of want to see if there's any trend that you can see. And so if you notice with this one, we could definitely say as the number of ads run during the week, the number of cars sold. So as the number of ads run during the week increase, the number of cars sold also increases. So anytime it asks you to an interpret, um, interpreting just means what do you see in the pattern? So you could have a pattern where 
they both go up from left to right. You could have a pattern where they both go down from left to right. You could have a nonlinear pattern where you have a curve. So when it asks you to interpret, it's just what is happening to your X and your Y variables. Okay. Um, so for both of these, they do increase. And for this one, if you had to come up with a line of best fit, which we're not doing in this video, um, this one would follow a linear enough pattern where it would be appropriate to come up with a line of best fit. There's no obvious curves or anything like that that you would be looking for um, to see if maybe you needed to come up with a nonlinear model. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.